Saturday. My name is Angie Snowball Thompson with Living in America, and I would like to welcome you to an episode of Business Without Borders. Today, Business Without Borders goes to Scotland. Now, this was recorded before we started with the LinkedIn Live series, which will actually be kicked off on this Wednesday. Very excited about that. This is a great example of what we do with Business Without Borders, just conversations with real people talking about real cultures and real stories. And today's episode was just too good to air on a weekday anyway, because it is so much fun. So without further ado, I would like to welcome Mr. Scott Cuthbertson to Business Without Borders Goes to Scotland. And today we are going to Scotland with my buddy Scott, Scotland's magician. Hey, hey Angie, how are you? I'm so good. So I got to tell you, Scott and I cheated. We chatted for about a half hour before we decided we to do this Yeah, today. we didn't actually, we didn't really plan anything though. We no. just kind of chatted. Yeah, we still have no plan. So just so no. you know, <laughs> that's kind of how I roll. We have no plan. We, we chatted for half an hour to make a plan and still didn't. So here we go. But um, yeah, so Scott and I were just talking. What I want to do with Worldly Wednesdays is just give people a little peek inside of places that they haven't been and may... Of course, we can't go anywhere right now, um, but kind of helping us as the world's getting smaller and we're all on Zoom, finding ways to work with different cultures, things I should know. So tell me the first thing I should know if I want to work with a Scott. First thing you should know, well, <laughs> we talk a lot. <laughs> oh, so it's not just you? <laughs> not just me, no. We all, that's the thing, but uh, when you get here, you'll notice that everybody wants to talk to you. You know, if you're standing in the street, people come up and say hello, just because that that's just how we are. We like to say, well, it's not like always being friendly. We're just checking out who it is that's arrived. You know, <laughs> making sure you have like, credentials for being in Scotland. So we're quite paranoid about that. Um, <laughs> and, and be ready for the weather. Um, you will get four seasons in one day. Okay. So always carry a brolly because, you oh, know, what? you're probably... I assume that's an umbrella. Point. Yeah, that's right. Sorry, I'll, I'll translate for into uh, American. Yes, that's so cute. That's way cuter than umbrella. Well, that's right, we talk a lot, right? And we've got a lot of information to go quickly, so we tend to shorten words quite a bit. <laughs> so, so yeah, brawly umbrella becomes brawly, and we'll you'll no doubt hear more of that as we go through. Okay. All right. Good. So but we're yeah. going to have to include a glossary with how to. Yeah. <laughs> go through and you realize that I'm going to make up words just for the sake of doing this. <laughs> you know, something else I learned about Scotland that I never knew before I learned when you talked to me at Christmas was about the whiskey with an E. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. No. So just if you, if you missed that one, how could you miss that? What a great podcast that was. I know that was good. If it's a whiskey from Scotland, which is, of course, the best kind of whiskey, it's spelled W-H-I-S-K-Y. If it has an E in it, it's not from Scotland. Now, I'm not saying all whiskeys not from Scotland are bad, but Scottish whiskey is, of course, the best. Obviously. Right? That's why when you go in and ask for whiskey, you say Scotch. <laughs> it's like automatic it's to make sure there's no e in it to get the the best although i am a bit partial to bourbon so they're allowed <laughs> that, that, that that's okay i'm fine with bourbon being in that group yeah, yeah. And being from kentucky i'm a big fan of that we drink yeah, that quite works. a bit of bourbon as well so <laughs> you have a key <laughs> Yeah, we, we've got it. We've got a lot of different bourbons. It was funny. Our Christmas conversation, like our Christmas dinner conversation, it's supposed to be family oriented. It was all about what new whiskey did or what new bourbon did you get this Christmas? Oh, dad got me this one. Oh, I got mom that one. Oh, man, I drank a whole bottle this last night. It's like, oh, our kids are doomed. <laughs> <laughs> but in a good way. In a good way. They'll be happy. <laughs> Be absolutely happy, it's been great. <laughs> and yeah, but don't, but the thing about um, really good whiskey is like, don't put any mixers in it, yeah, you know, because because I've seen people adding things like diet coke to whiskey. No, and, and have, you, have you tried Iron Brew? No, I haven't. Uh, so I've look got to try Iron that one. Brew. Okay, I R N B R U, Iron Brew, and okay. it looks like rust. Okay, the advertising campaign used to say made in Scotland from girders. Because it does. It's that kind of girders. Gutters? <laughs> girders. Oh, come on. You're just CC. <laughs> right? So it looks like rust. And it is just, and it's a great hangover cure. Oh. I'm not going to tell you how I know that. 
but uh, <laughs> just as and uh, but uh, that's what you know but I've seen people put iron brew in whiskey and you think no it's just wrong leave it as nature intended okay I, I yeah I'm a I'm also a fan of that I mean simple is better simple is better in life I think you know think we so. were yeah, and we were talking about that with another um, person last week that I had interviewed. We were talking about how, you know, now with Zoom, it's even more important to stay simple because everyone has the attention span of a goldfish, right? So if you are mm -hmm. not <laughs> short and to the point, I have no time for you. So everything <laughs> is <actually> simpler. <laughs> Yeah. So Scott, you've been on with me before and I think most people know what you do, but I did want to give you a minute too to tell everybody what you do because it's one of the most unique things that I've run across. And I know um, I've been had one of your shows before, been to one of your shows and we're scheduling another one for Sunday. I'm super excited about it. So tell everybody what you do. I, well, it's exactly what it says above. I'm a professional magician and this is my 21st year as a full-time magician and I've been doing it a long, 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 long time since, you know, I was like, like that big. Um, it's just been a passion. This thing but magic is when it really gets under your skin and you live and breathe magic, you know, um, even now I've got books sitting here that I've got that are like that thick, you know, on, on, on magic. And a lot of it is things that I already know and do, but you, you always find some little nugget, some little extra bit to help. And uh, so, uh, yeah, so while we have been in this strange situation, although can I just say that, you know, I'm not one, I'm not really down on what's happened because first of all, I wouldn't be talking to you. Yeah, yeah, right? true, right. Absolutely, so look at the, there's really cool things happened. And I've, I'm now able to perform magic online, which is a bit different for me. I like the live audience feel, I like the energy of, of talking to people. Um, I do it a bit differently. A lot of magicians are doing sort of very close up magic in front of the screen, whereas I'm really doing my cabaret show just yeah. so I can move around a little bit. So, you know, I, I do like to, to make it a bit different. And it's all about making people smile is the whole point of it. So there's a lot of very bad gags, as you know. Um, there's nothing clever. Like I say, keep it simple, right? There's nothing clever in the show, but it's all designed to make people laugh and smile and have a good time. And uh, that's my job title is really is is chief smiler maker i love that what a wonderful job to have <laughs> and you say there was nothing clever but i can tell you that when he did the show for my b and i group he pulled off two tricks in particular that i probably got text about the next three days because people kept saying are you sure you didn't cheat are you sure you i said no i have no idea how he did that so we there is something clever we're still in awe of, over it especially no, my accountant great. He can't get his head around it. He's he's convinced there has to be logic behind it. <laughs> well, yeah, the, that's the thing. But the the point of magic is, you know, it's it should be mysterious, you know. But I, it's like there's a lot of magicians on TV just now or on YouTube who who walk up to people, they do something, and then walk away again. You know, and it's 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 weird because that's what not magic's not for. That magic is to involve people and tell stories. Yeah, I love you know, that. And, it's such a good yeah, story. And just let people take a big part, take a role. That's what it's about. Let other people take a role, be a big part of what's happening. Um, it's not all about me. Although it I is love really. it. Let's be honest. <laughs> 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 Never do anything. So yeah, so but um, no, I, I'm really lucky. I get into it because I was made redundant from three different jobs very rapidly mm. and uh, just couldn't be bothered working for anybody else. Oh, wow. So I came home one day, I went to a really terrible job interview, right? Where they sucked the life out of me. And I came home to my wife and said, I'm just going to do magic full time. Right <laughs> now she was expecting our wee boy at the time. Right. Oh, wow. And she just said, okay. I was expecting a bit more of a conversation. Yeah. So it was like, all right. Okay. Where do I start? <laughs> and just kind of threw myself into it. Um, get very lucky. Met some really, really cool people at the very start who kept me very busy for the first few years. Oh, that and, is so uh, cool. It's been it's been really good fun since. And you know, like you said, that the lockdown, the pandemic, everything has been so awful in so many ways. But it's wonderful because you're for this, you're bringing it to so many people that would never yeah. have found you. I think it's I mean, awesome. I have I have now performed in the U.S. Yeah. 
Yeah, isn't yeah, that crazy? Like, I mean, I I've, I've performed in the US, which is amazing. Um, I've performed in Canada. That is so cool. I, I'm so excited for you. So tell me other, like, what are some other things that happened during lockdown in Scotland? Like, did you, first of all, did you have whiskey? Did they take your bourbon away? Did they close? The shops <laughs> or- <laughs> Fortunately, this is the strangest thing. Okay. The, the only shops allowed open were essentials. Okay. So you're thinking food, things like that, but they also left the wine shops open. Yeah, I think they must have realized. <laughs> yeah. So there was no issue, right? The, the funniest thing is, though, the um, Corona beer ran out in the mm. shops here. That became the most popular beer for quite a while. Oh, my gosh. That's so funny. <laughs> a, but again, as the Scottish people, we, we, we deal with everything with a, a very strange sense of humor. <laughs> I could say that because no. I got to say, I really steered away from it. Not that Corona invented coronavirus, but I would see it, no. you know, walking down Kroger. I'm like, too bad for you. I'm not touching mm-hmm. you again. <laughs> and you guys are like, come here, Corona. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you don't scare us. It's fine. <laughs> but, but again, we have this sense of humor that gets us through a lot of things, you know, especially when you, uh, you know, uh, at funerals, which, you know, unfortunately is happening now, but at a Scottish funeral, there's a lot of laughs, you know. And people talk about the, the recently deceased and they make fun because basically it's what we do. You know, we, we use humor to, to get through situations. So there's been a lot of very funny things happening that I probably shouldn't talk about. Um, <laughs> but, but then again, we stay, the, the village that we stay in, you know, there's not that many people around. So we've been away from the cities. Okay. So I've not been in Glasgow city centre now for nearly a year, which oh, wow. is strange. Um, that, that's that's the strangest feeling is, you know, not really being out and about. Yeah, I think that's but, that's uh, the one really hard thing for me is just um, I, even like the first time they really locked us down, it was maybe three four weeks, and I remember telling Jack, I said, if I don't meet a stranger soon, I'm going to lose my mind. Like that was the <laughs> hardest. It's been the hardest part of not being just social randomly. You know, it, it's yeah. I don't know it's crippling for me sometimes i just i need that no, it's, 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 it's really really tough i mean because i'm normally out in front of live audiences where i get a lot of um energy from that yeah and yeah. that's the the bit that i've really missed you know okay the it impacts business but what i really missed is getting out and meeting people and doing my thing i mean i really enjoyed it you know we went to a, a diy store a couple of weeks ago a sunday out to diy store it's like yeah let's go <laughs> and then went Went to a, a supermarket and I had, I've never done this, I had to queue outside the supermarket. Right? <laughs> no way. As you let no people way. in one at a time. Oh I thought, I've gosh. never, ever queued for that. And the excitement of being around looking at shelves and things. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've not seen Doritos in months. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's, yeah, so, but we get to it because we've, you know, our little family is, is really awesome. And we have some fun. So all through the summer, we have this big house that we've been supposed to be fixing up for the last 20 years. And now we've actually had a chance to do it. So my wife has been bricklaying. She was hey. she built decking around the house, landscaping. Me and my son, we had sledgehammers and crowbars. So we <laughs> took the old stuff apart, which was yeah. really good fun. And then we were doing the shifting and carrying bit, you know. Um, so it was good. We had quite a decent summer. Um, so we, we, we were outside a lot doing doing that. Um, so yeah, so like I say, I mean, it's like silver linings. Yeah, you know, some things haven't been good, but you know what? I've been introduced to you. I wouldn't right. have met you for, if we weren't going through this. Yeah, you know. Um, so it's just sitting down and saying, okay, let's stay positive. Yeah. And you know, it's interesting too, like not just getting to like meet people. That was one aspect of it being, having acquaintances and more connections, but I'm amazed that I can actually consider people, friends that I've met yeah. this way. Like, I really, truly consider you a friend. I woke up this morning Absolutely. and was like, oh my gosh, Scott's on my calendar today. This is awesome. <laughs> this is going to be so yeah. fun. And I love it. And you know, it's, it's Maxine Serrano's birthday today. And I thought, oh, my really good friend, you know, and I thought, wow, I've never met these people. And if you'd have told me I could do that a year ago, I don't think yeah. I would have believed you. Yeah. So, so uh, I'm looking forward to getting back out because my car has been sitting in 99,300 miles since March. <laughs> I've never had a car hit 100,000 miles. I'm looking forward to it. But I'm, I'm just looking to go. I just want to drive for 
hours, you know, yeah. and get back out into the scenery because that's what you really want to know about Scotland, right? Yeah. So when you come over, well, first of all, very important when you when you arrive, um, one place you have to, if you're a music fan, you have to visit is Prestwick Airport, which is in Ayrshire. And then it's only about 40 minutes from me. The reason you have to visit that is because it's the only place in the UK Elvis Presley ever set foot. Oh, really? And it was, it was a military flight that landed at Prestwick Airport to refuel. And he never and went to the UK except for that? Oh my except God. for that. So the, the coffee shop is called Graceland's. <laughs> you know, they're basically trying to milk everything they can from <laughs> that one thing. Oh my but, God. you know, yeah, but then what you want to do is go and hire a car, right? And you take the A82 road, which runs from Glasgow to Inverness. Right, it's about three, three and a half hours, but you'll be stopping a lot on the way because you start off heading into by Loch Lomond. You know, the lochs are our, our lakes. Mm -hmm. You follow it through Glencoe, through this amazing scenery, the mountains, the, the glens that have been left by the glaciers rolling through. So you've got these incredible boulder fields. Wow. as well and it looks like a, a lunar scape you know it's uh, as you drive through and then you head up alongside Loch Ness you know and all the roads are doing this it's single track road so it's not wow. a motorway or a, a freeway it's just small very very windy roads but the the views are just spectacular and you head up by Loch Ness past Urquhart Castle makes sure you stop off there because it's just one of the most tranquil spots you'll ever stand and look out. And then up to the, the top of Loch Ness is Inverness, which mm -hmm. is a nice little city. Um, yeah. uh, but it is just a spectacular car journey. So if I'm working in Inverness, which I do quite a bit, we actually go up the slow road and then we stay overnight and do the, the job the next day because oh. you don't want it. There is a quicker way to do it, but it's really dull. But you want to go up the scenic route and do that. It's spectacular, especially going through Glencoe, you know, the snow-capped mountains. I think, to be honest, at the moment, everything's snow-capped here. But <laughs> in the summer, that's, that's where all the skiing happens. Um, so it's, it's just wonderfully scenic, except mm -hmm. for the driver who has to stick on the road because it's a very windy road. And if you take your eyes off, go, ooh, you'll end up in front of a tour bus. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah. You don't want that. So, no, so so even better, find something to drive you. In fact, if you're coming over, let me know and I'll drive you. Oh, I will definitely when I come. We'll do over. a trip up yeah. to, to Inverness and show off and maybe spot the monster. Who knows? <gasps> Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah, I've never really been to Scotland. I, I went to Bambra, but it, it almost doesn't count, right? That's still kind of Newcastle land. Um, but that that was it. So yes, I'm definitely gonna have to come over and take a tour from you. That'll be awesome. No, absolutely. And uh, well, it's like when I came to to visit the U.S. You know, I was in Vegas, and I'm not sure that quite counts either. Yeah, it really doesn't. It's kind of its own little planet in a yeah, little bubble. Yeah, it's like this bubble in the desert. But oh, <laughs> what a time! You know what? It was I. I just the the greatest time, right? Because one of my, one of my friends, great friends, is Tanya Lee Davis, who's a stand up comedian, right? Yeah. Tanya Lee is three foot six, okay, oh, and she yeah. gets around. No, she gets around a wee mobility scooter, and she's based in Vegas for a time. Oh, okay, so I went over. We had lunch, and then she flew to Glasgow. <laughs> Just, you know, because she always does UK tour. Um, went to see Penn and Teller, of course. Go and see Penn and Teller, which was an awesome show, and then um, we decided to go and see the Grand Canyon. Now, here's the thing about this site. Now, look at the size of the UK. Right, yeah. and the size of the US is a bit different. <laughs> Love it. And we went to Grand Canyon, which is like that's a tourist attraction in Las Vegas, right? Yeah. But you have to fly into a different time zone <laughs> to visit a tourist attraction. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. But yes, you do. can I can I make a suggestion as well for anyone if you're planning on doing that trip when we can, right? Here's the real tip: do it really early in the morning. Right, we flew out of Vegas about 7 a.m., something like that. So we got, it was about an hour flight to the canyon, but we did the helicopter trip and the boat on the Colorado River. Because we were so early, there was nobody else there. Oh, there nice. There were no other helicopters, no boats. And the guide with us in the boat just said, boys, I never get to do this. And he killed the engine. <gasps> oh, cool. And 
we drifted and like the silence echoed in the canyon. Wow. It was weird. And then he let me drive the boat. <laughs> a picture of me going, Obviously, you didn't know you very well. <laughs> no, I can't believe it either. But you know, you don't pass up things like that. Um, oh, so wow. yeah, but like I say, so that was my one stop. Apart from there was a bar at New York Airport. I did spend quite some time in there. <laughs> right. So I don't know if that if I need a visa, if that counts my visa or not. But yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's a good time. I know. I can't wait till we can travel again. So yeah. last question before we wrap up, if I were, we talked a little bit about the way Scott's have a sense of humor and whatnot. And if I wanted to work with them, kind of what to expect, what do you look for when it comes to like selling? So, you know, Americans are all over the place. If you ask me what the American selling culture is, I would tell you a million things because we're all over the place. Um, yeah. But, you know, there are some cultures that have a little bit more stereotype of how to sell to them. Would you say Scotland has one of those or are they more like, eh, it depends on the person? It really depends. Um, you know, we have this attitude, whereas if we go into a store, we don't want to be bothered. We okay. don't want a salesperson to come up and say, hey, can I help you? Yeah. It's like, no. And and that's the, the, the biggest words or the most popular words are, I'm just looking. Yeah. <laughs> right. And so a lot of places you go into will just let you wander about and you go to them if you need help. But we kind of back away from pushy salespeople. I uh, I used to sell cell phones oh. right, many years ago when they went from being this big to <laughs> smaller versions. And um, we went to this incredible sales course, you know, for doing it, run by a company for, from England. And it was all about how to make friends first oh, without yeah. trying to sell. Yeah. So I think that's the kind of more culture is when you go into shop now, people will actually show hello, you know, because like I say, we're friendly, people talk to you. Yeah. But they're less likely to come up and, and annoy you. Okay. You know, Yeah. Um, as long as there's somebody around when you need them, it's good. But yeah, it's about, there's, we don't do a lot of hard sell. We're not into hard sell. Yeah, really? you know, I, I tend to think it as a culture coach or whatever, I read a lot of these articles about this and that, but I think the majority of people are not into hard sell anymore. I no. mean, I know that there are products where that works, but again, at the end of the day, you really, you buy it if you need it, you, you don't, or you want yeah. it, but you, nobody wants to be sold to. No, but then again, a lot of the, the salespeople these days work in commission, so I can mm. understand why. Right. Yeah, you know, yeah, why they're pushing. <laughs> yeah, and it's like when you go, it's like having fun with uh, if you're buying a car. Yeah. Right, because you're you're in the in the lot, right, looking at cars, and then you'll see one of the guys coming out. It's like something from Jaws. <laughs> and, uh, right, and these, you can see him hovering in the background, and they move towards you, so you move to the next car, <laughs> and you try and keep the like two or three cars between you until you find one you want, you know. And but what I've noticed in some some places, don't put prices on. Yeah. You need them. And you need to say to them and say, oh, how much is this? And they see that as an in. Uh, because one of the things I do in magic is I, I work trade shows for companies. Oh, yeah. And so what happens when I, I work in the stand for them to represent what they do. And when people come to trade shows, now they come to trade shows to meet the vendors, okay, to see what they're selling. But they'll also walk down the middle of the aisle wearing blinkers because they don't want to get sold to. Right. They don't want the salesperson to see. So what I do is I try and make it a softer introduction. And my way of doing it is saying, hello. <laughs> right? That's it. It's a ve And if you do trade shows, it's a very clever tip, right? I actually say hello to people as they walk past. Because yeah. you're used to seeing people hand there, handing out pens or handing out mugs. Right? Just say yeah, hello to them. And have, have a conversation. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's um, true. Yeah. I don't want to, so I'm just thinking now the, the Scottish Tourist Board are probably going to be on to me after seeing this. <laughs> and say, she said, no, no, tell them we're lovely. Tell them we're lovely. <laughs> and and you no, know, we are. The Scottish people are known to be really, really friendly. We are quite noisy and we are, you know, you know, if we see you in the street, we'll come and say hello. Oh, right. It's just awesome. what it's just what we do. And um we've it's been great. It's quite a bohemian Glasgow is quite a bohemian city now. We've had a lot of people coming across from other countries and it's great you know because they're all part of of the city 
Yeah. You know, and it all adds to the city and it's good. And we're only, there's not many of us. So anybody we can get in is good because it builds <laughs> up our numbers a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, gosh, I love this. Well, thank you again for doing this with me. It is always fun. And now, you know, you need to go to Scotland because it's beautiful, full of very friendly yep. people. And there is a fantastic magician there that's ready yep. to and, and welcome you with open arms. <laughs> come and say hi. If you're coming over, drop me a line and say you're coming. Right. <laughs> and because uh, Yeah, you can stay at our place. I'm sure we'll just we'll put a bed for you. It'll be fine. You know. <laughs> I love that. Now I'm going to hold you to that. So <laughs> someday I'll be Since knocking on your door. You don't, I'm going to be very disappointed in you. <laughs> right. I will be waiting at the airport. Right, I Hands in my hips saying, and, and where it says you're staying, staying in the hotel. <laughs> I wouldn't dream of it. <laughs> well, Scott, <laughs> thank you again. It was really, really great to talk with you. Uh, and thanks Angie, for sharing about Scotland. Always awesome to talk to you. Thank you so much for letting me do this. It's been a great pleasure. <laughs> thank you. Have a good one. You too.